Hello there, I'm Bondabert, and today I'm going to be ranking all the Harry Potter movies from worst to best. I ran a poll on my YouTube community tab, and this is what you guys want to see. I'm a big Harry Potter fan, and I've only made one video on it. I mean, I made three shorts in the past, but those don't really count. And they weren't really that good. If you want to see me talk more about Harry Potter, watch the video that I'm showing on screen right now. In that video, I talked about the books and the movies. But I wasn't able to share my thoughts on these movies in that video, besides like two of them. So that's why I'm making this video. I don't think I have anything else to say. Let's just get right into it with number eight. I had a hard time choosing this spot, but I had to give it to the Half-Blood Prince. For the record, I don't hate any of these movies. All of them are in my top 50. But yes, I do think Half-Blood Prince is the worst one. And I just think that's because it focuses more on romance than the book did. This movie feels more like a high school drama than any other Harry Potter movie. Now, people who haven't read the books probably don't care about this as much as I do. But it just changes way too much. And I'm going to be saying that with the next entry on this list too. The book isn't really focused on romance. It's more focused on the Half-Blood Prince and who he is. And also, learning about Voldemort's backstory and where he came from. I mean, it's not my favorite Harry Potter book, but it's up there. It's pretty good. Speaking of Voldemort's backstory, in the book, I don't know the exact number, but we get a lot of memories from Voldemort. Or Tom Riddle. But in the movie, we only get like three or two of them. And some of these memories are pretty important to the story. I mean, they did keep a pretty important one, but the rest are pretty important as well. And what do they do instead of putting more Tom Riddle memories? They add more stupid romance scenes, which is just exactly what we need in a movie like this. And also, they took out Dobby. Where is he? He's my favorite Harry Potter character, and they just go on and take him out of the movies. This movie just has so many problems, I can't eat it! Oh, sorry about that. Just got a little flustered there. Let's just move on to another movie before I start yelling again. Number 7. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Now, the last 40 or so minutes of this movie are really good. It's the rest that I really hate. This movie adds stuff that the book didn't have and that it didn't really need. For example, the dragon chase scene. In the book, it was just a quick whip in and out. Harry got the egg, and it was all fine and dandy. But now, we had to have a whole sequence of the dragon just destroying everything, and it was just a bunch of chaos that didn't need to happen. And it's just stupid how everyone was sitting in there in the stadium. And they took out Dobby again. I don't even know why at this point. Why'd they do Dobby so dirty in the movies? He was actually pretty important in the book. He helped Harry out with the Triwizard Tournament. But nah, they just gave scenes to Neville Longbottom. Another problem I have with this movie is that they kind of gave it more of a comedic tone that the book didn't have. I mean, the book had a lot of dark moments, and they did bring that over into the movies in some parts. But nah, they just kind of made some goofy scenes that didn't really need to happen, and it just felt stupid. This is probably the only book-to-movie adaptation from the whole series, that doesn't really match the tone of the book. Overall, this movie isn't horrible, I just have a lot of problems with it. I know it's a lot of non-book readers' favorite, because my brother said that it was his favorite, but I'm sure they wouldn't be saying that if they read the book. At the number 6 spot, we have Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. Now, I don't have as many problems with this movie as I do with the last two, but I just found this movie kind of boring and slow at a lot of parts. I mean, yeah, sure, it did have a lot of fun sequences, like escaping from a ministry and the Battle of the Seven Potters. And they finally gave Davi some screen time, let's go! But then he dies. Sorry for a little spoiler there, but like, it's like 10 years old at this point, who cares? Yeah, Davi's death and the ending of this movie are really good. And this movie does a great job of sending up Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. 
and you'll just have to wait to see where I rank that one. But let's move on to number five, which is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I don't know, this placement was really hard, but I decided to put Chamber of Secrets here. I don't even have a lot of problems with this movie. My biggest problem is that it's pretty forgettable. And the ending was pretty cheesy. But yeah, I don't have too many problems with this movie. It's just kind of that awkward placement, you know? I mean, I thought the basculist was pretty cool. Dobby was brought right off the page. His personality was awesome. I, the CG wasn't amazing, but it still worked. And Dobby's one of the highlights of this movie, definitely. That's all I have to say. It's definitely the weakest of the first three, but not by much. This, of course, will lead us into our next ranking, which is number four. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, or Philosopher's Stone, depending on if you're in Europe or not. Now, this movie is really good. This just feels like a lighthearted children's movie. And the child acting isn't even that bad. I mean, you gotta give the filmmakers credit. I mean, they made all of this stuff based on the descriptions from this book. And this is the one that starts it all. So they basically had an entire franchise on their shoulders, and they did a really good job with this one. I mean, Hogwarts looks amazing in the live-action movies. I mean, it's what you'd expect a magical castle school to look like. The filmmakers did a really good job with this set piece. And Diagon Alley is awesome. Without this movie, we would not have the iconic Harry Potter score that we know and love today. This movie is very influential and just really good. My only problem is the CG. For a franchise that relies on it, it's not great. I mean, you can't blame them because it's 2000 or 2001. But yeah, that's my only problem. Let's just get into the next one. Which, of course, is number three. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Now, this is probably the most underrated movie and book, in my opinion. I mean, it's my second favorite Harry Potter book and my thir uh, third favorite Harry Potter movie. But the real question is, why? Well, this movie brings Dementors straight from the pages, and they're absolutely horrifying. This movie does a great job of adapting things from the book. Just like Dementors. Another reason why this movie is great is because the time travel scene in this movie is honestly better than the book, in my opinion. It makes more sense to me, and I just felt like it was cool how time reversed in the scene. Kind of makes me want a time turner now. And this movie does have a big impact on the Harry Potter franchise and plot. Another reason why this movie is great is the cinematography. Almost every shot in this movie is just beautiful and amazing. Alfonso Cuaron did an amazing job. I'd say this is the best, well-directed Harry Potter movie. And it's the only one directed by Alfonso Cuaron. But yeah, this movie's definitely underrated. If you watched it and thought it was bad, maybe give it a rewatch. See what you think now. Number 2. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. This movie's just a great finale for the movies. It was built up over 10 years. It's based off of the second half of the Deathly Hallows book, which is a lot better than the first half. It's a lot less boring, and yeah, I just never felt myself bored during this movie. The pacing's great, the action's great. I don't have really any problems besides one. No, don't get me wrong, I love the final battle between Harry and Voldemort. But in the movie, he, Voldemort just kind of dies like this powerful being. But in the book, he just dies like a normal person, because that's what he is. In the movie, he withers away. And that's just kind of stupid. That's my only problem with this movie. I mean, the Battle of Hogwarts is amazing. It's so fun and cool. And it's pretty much how I pictured it. And the epilogue was pretty great. Everything in this movie is basically how I pictured it from the book. And that's just one of the reasons why the number one spot is where it's at. I mean, sure, this is number two. And if you've been keeping track, you know what's at number one. Numero uno. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. This movie's just fun from beginning to end. It's got a lot of fun sequences that I'll get into in a minute. 
but this is the perfect book-to-movie adaptation. In the movie, everything is exactly, basically, how I pictured it in the book. One of those things is Dolores Umbridge. I'm not going to spend too much time on her, because I already did that in my book-to-movie adaptations video. But basically, this movie nailed her down to a T. You know how I talked about those fun sequences all earlier? I'll just name a couple here. A lot of the sequences with the DA were pretty fun and cool. I really liked how this movie showed the Patronus uh, lesson. That was pretty cool. And they just did the DA pretty well in this movie. And yeah, Umbridge is part of a lot of fun sequences in this movie. This movie's just really fun to watch. It gets rid of a lot of the boring stuff that the book had while keeping some very important stuff, like the prophecy, because they had to do that. Speaking of prophecies, the battle in the Department of Mysteries was really fun in this movie. In the book, it was long and drawn out, but in the movie, we get right to it. And that's what I like about this movie. It changes things from the book for the better. I'm just never bored, and if they kept that St. Mungo scene, I'm sure I would be bored. In conclusion... I believe Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix is the best Harry Potter movie. Thank you all f for watching if you made it this far. Make sure you leave a like if you liked it or if you agree. And comment down your um, ranking in the comments. And make sure to subscribe. If I reach 420 subscribers by the middle of March, I'd say, I will indeed shave my head. Alright, that is Bonnebert out.